I'm really not a singer. I'm not a singer. What I am, and I know I'm stating the obvious, but from my very, very sleek physique, I know you can tell that I am a marathon runner. I know you can see it. I know. I know. I am a runner. I am a runner. I have been running all of my life. Oh, every single... I'm tired. I'm tired. And the reason I say I'm a runner is because I have run away from being who I really am. I am a bold, big, in the forefront, out there, look at her, wave your hands, do a cartwheel person. That's who I am. <laughs> and I have fought diligently to not be that person. <laughs> Hard. So I, when I, I, I turned 35 this year, and last year, um, when I was 34 and 35 was coming, because you know 35 is the number uh, of something being different. Um, and so I said, you know what? I'm gonna step out. I'm gonna do what people have always been telling me I should do. I'm gonna just go out there. I was doing theater, but I was being the actor in the play instead of actively being the writer and all of these different things. And I said, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna write my own shows. Yeah, and I'm gonna do it. It's gonna be great. And so I stepped out and I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, a, before this, I'm gonna do a few plays. And I could not understand at the time, why do they keep giving me these diva roles? I'm not a diva. I'm like the Monet of divas. Like, I, from far away, that looks really good. You get up on it, it's like, what? Oh, it's dots everywhere. You know, so I, I started to learn to embrace. I said, fine. I was in a, in a theatrical production and I played Patti LaBelle. And I said, Patti LaBelle, who was, who, Patti LaBelle? Do you know how big she is? And then I was in another production and then I was Patti LaBelle. And you know, there are two people here in Chicago who give a lot of uh, feedback on theater and that's uh, Chris Jones and Hetty Weiss. And they would, they kind of tore our production up with the reviews, oh, the production, the, the, the plot, the, this. but that darn blessed, she was one. I said, oh, geez, I'm trying to fade to the background. So I said, fine, I'm gonna do a show about Patti LaBelle. And so this is a shameless plug. <laughs> Spoiler alert. At the Bodhi Spiritual Center, Dawn Bless will be appearing as Living LaBelle, a tribute to Patti LaBelle, May 10th, the day before Mother's Day. So, and then I'm also, I also last year started a singing group, and I'm like the leader of it. I mean, it's like, it, all eyes are on me. I'm like, I'm over it, but I guess I have to learn to embrace it, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
So that's what I'm doing. I mean, reluctantly and, and kicking and screaming, I'm trying to step out into the forefront. And I found out that there are different people all during my life that I've met who are also stepping out in the forefront. There is a young lady here in Chicago, even. Her name is Kokoma, and she, I met her during After School Matters, how we worked together. And so we worked together, and I was like, I don't know who this person, who is she? I only spent like a day or two with her, and I said, I don't know, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know if it's a girl or if it's a boy, but either way, she's pretty, so you know, whatever. And then I went on about my way, and a few years later, which was actually last year, I met her again, but in the form, of a monologue. I met her through a theater company called Erasing the Distance, which highlights mental illness through theater. They basically get interviews of people verbatim, and they talk about mental illness, and then they put in the actor's hands the verbatim words, and it's a theatrical performance, it's monologues. So I met Ms. Kokoma uh, through a monologue about her talking about being herself, and it goes a little like this. I'm browning, I'm shrinking, you don't see. I shrivel more into colors you ignore as the earth swallows me. You crush the fire red standing on my head. You crush the fire red, leaving me for dead, sunken and gray. You used to say that I'm not enough for you. I bleed you to see. I bleed you to see. I bleed you to see a brand new one falling. Hello, my name is Kokoma. All capital letters, K-O-K-U-M-O. -K my name means this one will not die. And the reason I named myself Kokoma is because growing up as a transsexual woman of color, I've always been told that I would die. I've been told that I'd be infected with AIDS, I'd be raped and beaten, I'd be murdered because everything that I am is an abomination. Well, according to the people I was born dealing with on the south side of Chicago, I was openly feminine, but I was never gay because I never identified as a man and my family always knew that. I always knew that. <laughs> I remember watching Beauty and the Beast. Oh, and I remember how Belle was so beautiful and they were in that big, ballroom just traipsing across and she had that pretty dress on and what I remember is going to my bathroom and in it it had these really cute shower curtains you know sometimes silk and multichromatic so what I would do is take them off and I'd pretend that I was Belle <laughs> and there I'd be just smiling in the mirror just not thinking anything of it and then have my mama walk past and have my daddy walk past and then both of my brothers walk past and everybody's like, what is that boy doing? I was just being myself, you know? There were multiple people who sexually abused me as a child. The first person I remember would have to be my uncle. I remember him constantly yelling, you like that, don't you fack it? You like that, don't you fack it? I didn't even see it as something wrong because I thought it was just discipline, you know? Like, what's the difference of Uncle Melvin sticking his penis in me as opposed to him hitting me with a belt? There was nothing to protest because as far as I was concerned growing up as a child, that's the way children are treated. You're beat, you know, and it's all okay because you brought it on yourself. Now, I know you all out there saying, well, she didn't came with this sad song. We, we thought she was going to sing. But this story is actually not as deep and heavy and hurtful as it is because I learned that she was just speaking her truth. This is my favorite part of this monologue. She says, 
So how I got over the abuse, not just the sexual part of it, because I believe the sexual part of that's that's the least of it. The fucked up part <laughs> is when you believe you deserved it. When that person has succeeded in making you feel so worthless that they make you think that that's your lot in life to sit back and be abused. The charge is to deal with those things and try them. Because you'll never not have to deal with them. You just have to figure out the best way to deal with them. And I always have people who don't see me for who I am. And my charge is to not give a fuck and sing. (laughs) And I learned that someone who was born with the feminine energy Someone who just wants to be who they are. I said, how dare I continue to push myself down when there are people out here fighting to come forward? They wish they could have the freedom that I take for granted. To walk the streets and have a boyfriend and no one look at me crazy and get married and wear bras and panties. How dare I? So I just want to leave you all with this song right here. If you ever forget who you are, if you ever forget and you ever shy away from being who you really are, remember who you are. You are love, and love is sufficient unto itself. You are enough, and love begets love. How can love not be worthy of love? Let's go. What's your definition of it? How it make you feel? Tell me what you say that truly makes it real. Kings and queens, philosophers have tried so hard to find. Tell me what it means to you, dear. Never mind. Love is kind when the world is cold. Love stays strong when the fight gets old. Love's a shoulder to lean on. Love is you. Love's like the water when the well runs dry. Quench my thirst, keep me alive. Just need one sip, baby. Love is you. 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 Is it possible there is a kiss that's so divine? Or am I just a fool? Is it all in my mind? Is it something chemical a scientist might say? Well, love must be a drug to make me feel this way. Cause love's my permission to be who I am No inhibitions cause you understand Freedom to breathe, oh baby Love is you Love's like a kiss when the sun goes down Holds me tight when no one's around Love's what I want to come home to Love is you Love is you Love is you Love is you Love's the one that makes me stronger I don't have to look no longer You're the one I cling to Love is you When the chips are down Love will stick around Oh, I'm so glad I found Love is you As much as I try to clarify Love's quite simple, it's just my guide The perfect definition Love is you Love is you Love is me Love is we Love is you